Okay. Hey boys and girls, how are you? Hey, I just wanted to shoot out this quick lesson for you. Um, since we won't be meeting face to face, we're just going to go over really quickly. Um, one good, some good ways um, to read some nonfiction. And we are going to start by um, telling what nonfiction. Here, I think I have a, a star. Maybe not. Um, we're going to tell what nonfiction is, what the difference between fiction and nonfiction. And then we're going to look for some text features in our nonfiction stories and use those to help us be able to um, answer some questions and, um, and tell why text features are important when we're reading uh, nonfiction text. Okay. So first of all, let's refresh our brain. What's the difference between fiction and nonfiction? Anybody remember? Nonfiction. Um, nonfiction teaches us about real things, teaches us facts. Mrs. Vuxen always remembers because I can say, oh, okay, fiction fake. And so nonfiction is the opposite of that, right? It's, it's not fake, it's real. It's got real information. So with our real information um, comes our text features and photographs. Um, and text features are just a different way to show our information on the page. And we can only find these text features in nonfiction text. Okay, So it might cover some topics. You might see these text features whenever you're reading something about holidays or animals or sports, um, anything that's real, right? Um, real information. So let's take a look at some of these text features. What are they? Um, so one text feature is called a heading, and the heading um, is at the top of a paragraph. So this is actually, here's the book down here. This is a Rosa Parks book. Um, the title is Rosa Parks, um, and when you open it, sometimes it almost looks like another um, title, but this is not the front cover. This is the inside, so this is called a heading, and the heading tells us that this whole page is going to be about Rosa growing up. So our heading kind of tells us what each section is going to be about, what each page is going to be about. This one's all about her growing up, um, where she came, she was born, she grew up in Tusky, Alabama, she had to take care of her little brother. Okay, So the headings tell us about other sections. Let's see if we can find another one. Um, this one does not have a heading. We'll keep our eyes peeled for a heading, another heading. So we'll also find in our nonfiction stories, um, we'll find diagrams with labels. So a diagram is like a picture where it shows you the different parts of an object. And they'll use the labels with the little arrows or a little line um, to help identify the different parts of the diagram. So um, here over here, in, we are still in our Rosa Parks story. This here's a diagram of the bus, and um, you can see some labels. Here's the label for the front of the bus, here's the label for the back of the bus, and here's this line that shows us where Rosa Parks sat um, on the bus. Okay, so it's helpful to help us make a picture in our head, right? Um, next thing we can all often find in our nonfiction text are keywords. And keywords are important words. Sometimes they'll be words that we aren't familiar with. Um, sometimes they'll be in italics, so they'll be kind of be like a little crooked. Sometimes they'll be bold in a dark color, um, or sometimes they'll be in a different color. Sometimes it might pop up with a little line that tells you what it means next to it. So here's one on this page, inspire, and down here it says words to know. So they've made this keyword that Rosa Parks can inspire, and they tell you what inspire means um, to help you know, because sometimes there's odd words in nonfiction that we aren't used to reading, right? Also, here's another one. Um, here's another heading up here, something time, we can't see it, but there's another heading. Um, but often in... Uh, non-fiction text, we'll see photographs or illustrations, usually photographs, um, like real pictures, but sometimes there'll be an illustration of something. But So the photographs um, are important because, once again, we're making a picture in our head, goes back to our diagram, right? Helps us know what we're looking at in our picture, or in, in our head, so um, 
we can make a picture in our head of while, uh, while we're reading, right? And with a photograph, there's usually captions. And a caption is a little bubble of word that's either underneath or on the side or on top of the picture that tells you more information about a picture. So here we've got a live um, a picture, people standing saying, see you later to the bus, right? And it says, people boycotted the buses, wave to an empty bus driving by. So it tells you what's happening in your photograph. Let's come back here and look at some of these photographs. Um, here's another photograph of some women, and here's a caption next to it. U.S. events in 1920, women were allowed to vote for the first time in history. Here's another photograph, and next to it there's a caption. Children played games like marbles and kicked the can, which is similar to hide-and-seek. Okay. So anytime you see a photograph, there's normally a caption with it to tell you more about um, the photograph. And we'll also finally see some charts and graphs in our nonfiction text. And charts and graphs are helpful because they give you a um, almost like a picture of numbers, right? So they help us see numbers um, in, in a picture form. So here's this one, um, like a chart of what who likes what to eat for lunch. Here's some graphs to show you people's favorite colors. Um, here in our Rosa Parks book, here uh, was a graph that says poverty dis decreases. This graph shows how the percentage of African American families living in poverty has changed and how much it has gone. So you can see it went down and then up and down and up and down. Um, you can see how it's changed over the year. But it kind of, the graph shows numbers in uh, in a way that's easier for us to understand. So you might see those in your um, nonfiction text. So let's read, guys. Your turn. We're going to read um, a story called Hippopotamus. And let's see if we can find a heading and a photograph and a caption, diagram with labels, a chart, some keywords. See if we can find some of these in our text today. Okay? Oh. Where did the story go? Oh, I clicked the wrong button. One second, boys and girls. Sorry. There we go. Hippopotamus. Um, so why don't you take a minute, pause the, um, the story, read these couple pages, and when you are ready, hit play again, and we'll see if we can find any of our things. Okay, so hippopotamuses are huge mammals that live in Africa. They wallow in lakes and, and slow-moving rivers. Hippos have adapted well to the wetland biomes. African wetlands get hot and hippos stay cool underwater. Their eyes and ears and nostrils are on top of their head. This means the hippos can stay submerged. All right, boys and girls, so when you were reading the text, did anybody see any headings? See if you can point to the headings. That's right. Here's a heading right there, life in the wetlands. So this is telling us all about life in the wetlands, right? I also see some... Um, Photographs. I see some photographs. Here's a photograph. Here's a map. I here's some more photographs over here, right? I see some labels on our photograph. <gasps> see down there it says nostrils and it's pointing to the hippo's nostrils. I also see some keywords in that dark bold print. There's mammals and wallow and adapted and biome, lots of new words for us, right? For sure. All right, let's turn the page. Go ahead and hit pause. Read these two pages to yourself, and then let's come back and see if you can find um, any other um, photographs or captions in this section. All right, so you came back, you read more about hippos and their eyelids, how they can see underwater. Isn't that cool? Um, does anybody see a photograph um, with a label or a caption? Here's one. It says red mucus. So it's showing you the skin on the hippo, um, how it produces uh, something called red mucus to keep them safe from the sun. Pretty gross, right? Here's another. There's a label. All right. Let's hit pause, go ahead and read these two pages, and then when you come back, when you're ready, come back. Tell me if you see any headings. 
All right, so here is a heading sticking together. So this whole section is going to be about how hippos stay together. I also see some more photos and some captions. Here it says bloat. So this photo is all about the bloat or the group of hippos. This photo is called calves. So this is all about their baby calves. I also see a chart. Does anybody see a chart here? Can you find a chart? Ah, here is the chart. This is helping us um, see how, where hippos um, are in danger um, compared to other animals. So they are vulnerable. Um, so we have to take care of our hippos. Um, that chart is showing us how they can be vulnerable. All right, boys and girls, last little bit. Everybody hit pause one more time and read these two pages. All right, I see another heading. Does anybody see another heading? Hungry, hungry hippos. So that tells us these next couple pages talk about all about how they're eating and how they can eat in their mouths, right? I also see some captions underneath photos. Here is scratch grass and green foxtail and papyrus sedge. I also see some labels. Here's a label pointing to their tusks, right? So all these different parts of our nonfiction text help us um, to be able to read and understand our texts a little bit better. All right, boys and girls, so now we're going to go back to Class Kick. And if you click over to the next page, um, you're going to have a choice. Oh, you know what? Actually, hold on. I'm going to show you what you're going to do. Um, you're going to go back to Class Kick in a minute, and you are going to find some of these items in your own story. Um, and think about how they helped you. So let's come back here to Heading. Let's see. I found a heading on page 18. Mrs. Fuxen's going to write, okay, 18, I found it on page 18. And let's think about how did that heading help me? Hmm, so it says Hungry, Hungry Hippos. How did reading that heading help me understand my story a little bit more? I bet you said you could know what that section is going to be about, right? It told me that part would be about hippos eating okay and let's see maybe I found some keywords let's see let's come back here oh my goodness I saw a keyword here's one right here tusks this says it's on page 20 and how did that keyword help me to be able to identify that keyword anybody have any ideas how that helped me it helped um, identify a different new part of a hippo. All right, how about, uh, let's see. How about this? Let's go find a caption. Hmm, anybody see any captions? Oh, I see some captions right here. Remember, under or next to or beside our pictures? So how did these captions help us? They told us. This was on page 19. They told us what those different plants look like. Could actually go with my photos and my captions, huh? It helped me know what the, the different plants looked like. Well, still look like, for sure. So your turn. You're going to go back to Class Kick, and you can choose to either... Um, find some of these text features in a story about meerkats or in a story about baseball and think about how the different parts of the text features helped you while you were reading okay can't wait to see your work boys and girls